friends can be seated. Once in a while you see something interesting but you don't quite know the history 
And then, but then you are always on the lookout for something to take a good picture at least. Right? A lot of photographers here and we all uh, look to see how we can enjoy the nature. And uh, we actually try to stop and smell the roses sometimes. Right? But some of us, the emperors especially, I mean, they're just one way up. I mean, no stopping them at all, right? Are there the emperors here? Pray. <laughs> pray. Right? If I go with pray, sometimes I have a whole guy hey, pray, I want to look at this. But we do enjoy some of the stuff, right? So, after today's session, I'm going to show you that you guys are going to look at temples in a different manner after these four minutes. Alright? So, are you game for that? <laughs> okay. What is this? Golden Gate. Golden Gate Bridge. How about this? Eiffel Tower. How about this? Big Ben in London? How about this? The Great Wall. How about this? Opera House in Sydney. How about this? The Leaning Tower. Right? Now, all of these are great artifacts. They are the most monuments in the world. Right? In fact, um, when I once went to uh, Golden Gate, the, the tourist guide was saying, you know what, this is the longest class, this is the uh, biggest something. And he was giving me a whole bunch of stuff. And then he said, but you know what, it's not any of those, it's not the longest, it's not the brightest, it's not the strongest, it's not the blah blah blah. I said, okay, why do people uh, come here? He said, but it's the most photographed place, you take another picture. And when I took another picture, it became the most photographed place again, right? So they are deriving the most something by some attribute that's not even real. Okay? So how about this? What is this? Tanjay Big Temple. How about this? Gangai Kutu Chodavaram. How about this? Dharasuram. Wow! A lot of people know this. How about this? Are they in a column? Lotus Putramari Kulam. Are they Putramari Kulam? Right. Next. Sesha Pandavam in Sri Rangam. Irvannamalai. Navani was voted at the recent time. Creating controversy. Right? But uh, he took a picture from uh, the top of a hill looking out into Irvannamalai. But that Irvannamalai. How about this? And wall. Uh, and and uh, Peter, what do you, what reminds you of Parini? <laughs> <laughs> Not this, right? I think that's actually on the entrance to our select, but we all mostly focus on <laughs> <laughs> You are actually focusing on the hills behind there, right? And that's what uh, actually uh, um, drives us there. How about the stacking? This is Thiruvannamalai, built in the 9th century. Right? 9th century. In fact, when you walk out from the outside, you're walking from recent past to the utmost past. Right? So from 17th, 18th century, where the uh, Naikas, uh, the Vijayanagara guys built, uh, back to uh, Chora, to Pandya, all the way to Pallava. Right? Mahindra, Pallava, and then earlier. So this, this actually uh, dates back to the 6th century. And uh, this one, again, this is uh, Sri Ranga. It's got 21 gopurams, 21 gopurams, 50 sanadis, 7 praharams. It is the largest of temples that's in worship, active worship right now. Not even Angkor Wat. I mean, it's not, it, it's actually bigger than this, but it's not under worship. Right? So we have this. And Patramarikuram, Nakiran, what does he say? Nitpikanturapinam Kutram Kutrame. Right? We know that. This one, Dharasuram. Dharasuram was built by Raja Raja Chodan II, not the first one. This one was uh, Rajendra Chodan. Rajendra Chodan, and finally, we have Perigoy. Uh, and how about this? I'm sorry, go ahead. Hampi. Not Vikal Sami, not uh, Hampi. Not Manachanallo. This is where Raja Rajan grew up. Raja Raja Shodan grew up. His son was brought up by his uh, sister. What's his sister's name? Kundavai. So Raja Raja Shodan's son actually played around in this place. It's a place called Parayari. Parayari. This is the Tanjavur area. Now, 
look at that particular spot there, right? It's, it's, it looks nice. And if I stood there, I'm probably only that, that high. And when I went there, that's what it is. Whoa. So look at this. There are stairs to go up here. Other way would penetrate my down. You, you, you have to be very careful. You, you can climb up there, and then when you go there, and that's what's looking out there. Look at the brick structures. Right? Now, this one, um, you would miss this. In fact, we missed this. We went ahead and uh, tried to look out for this place. No one knew where this place was. Tirukundamuri. Right? Tirukundamuri, Mahadeva. Now, do you know who led us that, to that place? There was a drunk on the street who said, Angala Poga is a Indiatla Poga sir. Anga Puriya Nalla Puriya is a little bit. Puriya Koyi Soli, Kam a drunk guy, and that's exactly what it is. It's the first brick, I mean, uh, stone structure built by Raja Raja. He built it uh, before the big temple. It's historically very irrelevant. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely place. We actually had to climb over the compound wall to get inside. And I feel it's okay. Uh, ASI actually uh, allows us to go in if it's open. We can take as many pictures as we want. <coughs> except the guy who they have uh, uh, hired to do that is not anywhere to be found. So we, we, we just climb over the uh, compound wall and go. Now, next picture, what is this? Someone said Mahabhava? Yeah, I'm sorry? Ceiling painting by Jane. Okay. Someone said Mahabhavaram. Actually, this was much before Mahabhavaram. This is where Mahendra Varman. Mandagopattu. Right? Mandagopattu. So, this guy built this and uh, uh, we have titles for uh, our cine stars, right? Rajini is uh, what title? Superstar. Superstar. You know Right? This man, he actually had about 400 odd uh, uh, titles for himself. He just created a title. But he did it in a wonderful, beautiful way. When he built this, he called himself Vichitra Chittan. Vichitra Chittan, what, what does Vichitra mean? Strange, 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 weird and all that, right? He called himself a chitta because until then, temples were built out of either timber or some metal or some bricks uh, and mortar. This one he said, this is the first temple that's going to be built with no mortar, no timber, no jingle, no nothing. And he actually puts it up on an inscription. inscription. The inscription is right in there. You can actually go and check the inscription. And it's all there for us to see. And this one, uh, these statues are so tall, if I sit there, I'm probably that high. <coughs> and um, this, this was a prelude to all of the uh, modern uh, building that we have right now. Look at the sunshade. Right? He's cut it out like, as though he's cut it from cheese. This way, no water falls inside. And that was the first time in uh, South India we actually started having sunshade that made sure that water does not come into temples. So we, he tried it, this is near Kanjibar. He tried a number of places and then finally he perfected it in Mahabalipur. And of course right now we do something else inside those temples. See those bottles there? The age of Sipu. I'm sorry? The age of Sipu. Uh, this is uh, 630, 620. So, 7th century, so we are up there to 1200 years, no, no, more than that, so 1400 years almost, right? So, uh, very, very old, uh, and then uh, we actually go ahead and drink, we use that. Now, uh, one of the reasons why I brought this topic here is, um, typically if we trekkers go to these places, the people that do this are not going to be around at all. You don't have to fight with them. You don't have to shoo them away. They will automatically go away. The more of us go there, the less of them they will find time to go there at all. So that's why I put this slide out there to show that uh, it is being frequented by people that uh, are kind of unsocial, not necessarily with our uh, uh, angle, but you can make, it, make a change there. Now this one, another interesting one, uh, you see that three of us are actually climbing, that's me there, uh, Ramesh Muttayan and Akila. 
they are my uh, partners in crime. There are four of us that go around. And the fourth person is, uh, all of you probably know him, uh, his name is Sasi Daran. So the four of us go and uh, we are climbing a small hill off. Take a nice little steps. It's actually slippery. You got to be a good trekker to actually climb that. Uh, normal people don't really uh, find it uh, safe to climb, but we can just run up there. When you run up there, you can take a beautiful view of a temple, and this place is called Siya Mangalam. Siya Mangalam is, uh, I mean, you see this temple, these were built by the uh, um, Vijayanandra uh, people, and then we have a Choda guy who built here, and then finally here we had a Kodavari. Kodavari is dug into the uh, into the uh, caves, which is the previous uh, uh, temple that I showed you, right? So, this one, it, it's a beautiful place, I mean, there are small hillocks. We heard that there are places where uh, there are chain beds that have been carved into stone. So, we just walked around and we found it. In fact, um, I came across a place where they had uh, kind of demolished the earth. There was a bulldozer there that must have um, leveled the ground. And I saw this. Now that one is a Jain pottery, a broken pottery, Jain pottery, and it's probably 10th century minimum. I mean, imagine, 10th century pottery I'm holding in my hand, <coughs> no one to claim it. And if, if I leave it there, no one's going to, I mean, even know that it's there, probably it'll get uh, run over by another truck or something. And there are so many treasures they, that we really can't even rescue them, nor can we leave them. I, I don't know what to do with it, I, I left it there because there are so many of them. But just imagine, right in front of your eyes, you're seeing about 1,200 years old things. But I, I, I used to live in the U.S. Any, any place older than 100 years is called a um, heritage site. Right? And I'm holding heritage in my hand here. There I really cannot hold anything. I mean, they're all behind glass doors. I have it right here. Okay, so this one is another uh, Kodava, right? Um, this is a beautiful Kodavari, probably the second one that he built, Mahendra Varman. Uh, the Kodavari is right there and, and, and these are beautiful rocks. And as trickers, what would we like to do? Climb, climb, up. climb, climb up. And that's exactly what they did too. The Jain saints, they actually carved uh, stairs and it's, it's actually quite steep. It's, it's not uh, so very easy and it's fun to climb. Uh, and if you, have, if you have no experience in climbing, you can still hold on to somebody's hand and still climb up there. And uh, there you go. It's a beautiful view from there. This, this part is actually uh, from there. That's where we are. This one. Right? So we have, we have climbed up there and you can see the grooves that have been cut there. This allowed the water to actually fall from the, from the rock and drain away, keeping this entire place dry for the Jain saints to sleep. I mean, just imagine again, 10th century, they've, they've done this and you're actually walking on them. You can walk there, you can lie down there, pictures of uh, our friends lying down and, and uh, taking a rest. Um, then again, it, it's, a, it's a heritage, it, it really is right there. And the view from there is immaculate. Uh, you have all these fields and just trekking to that place. You really cannot even uh, take a car there. You have to leave the car somewhere and you have to trek your way there. So this might not be a, uh, as dangerous as uh, climbing uh, the uh, Palani Hills, but this is uh, definitely rewarding when you go there and see the bed there. Alright, um, probably about a year and a half ago, how many of you have uh, um, known about this tall statue in southern India of Thiruvalluvar. Kanyakumari, right? A tall statue. You've all heard of it? It was constructed by a guy called Ganapati Stapati. Ganapati Stapati, uh, he comes from a uh, rich lineage of uh, Stapatis who built the big temple. And I had the good fortune to get to know him the last few days of his life. He was admitted in our hospital and uh, was very sick. But through that sickness, he would attempt to talk to me and he would actually talk about the Madhavi statue that he uh, constructed and, and he would put his hands in, in, in the curve and I could see that his only um, um, pleasure that he derived was when he explained what he had done. In fact, most of these statues that are built in temples, you would not see any author's name at all, any sculptor's name at all. They are all unnamed. 
the, the, it was not like Michelangelo, boom, he put, put a signature there, Picasso put a signature there, um, Monet put a signature there. These guys, we don't even know who they did. I mean, who are they are? They are uh, constructed these wonderful uh, uh, creations and they left us these uh, stuff and um, from just this chisel, uh, these sculptors created a wonderful life. And look at this picture here. This is in Namdi. Right? Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. There is a, um, um, a, a clan that was called Palavetaraya. This is in a place called Padubur, in their place. Look at the way that uh, Nandi is sitting there. Um, it, it looks like why Asa Kodudu Sulvang, it's cut chewing. You can almost see that thing cut chewing on it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, look at the detail, look at the hump there. I mean the hump there and look at the toe there, look at the hair, and the tail coming out there. <coughs> and there are times, uh, you, you literally, if it's a little bit dark, you might think it's a real bull sitting there. And I'm not exaggerating, you really have to go there to feel how it is. Um, but this was the uh, result of someone's great imagination, right? Uh, as to how to make something look so good. And then look at this picture here. What do you think this is? An unfinished? Unfinished Nandi, right? Okay. Now, unfinished Nandi, why was it unfinished? Um, we don't know. Uh, there's a place called Tiruvakkarai, which is where they took all the stones to build the big temple, right? And uh, they took it by, uh, by a river called Varaganadi. Varaganadi, is there, What reminds you of Varaganadi? In a bucket. Varaganadi is actually almost uh, dry now. Uh, you can trek on that Varaganadi, by the way. Uh, it's, it's a nice uh, way to trek also. Um, at the Varaganadi, they put this, uh, someone must have uh, sent this, and it did not reach Tanjavur. It stayed back here. So, unlike this previous guy who got chiseled and got the opportunity to stand and uh, sit in front of God, this guy, poor guy, do you know where he's sitting? Any guesses? I'm sorry? Tisha. Tisha. Someone said Tasman. Adira. Sarai This guy is actually sitting right outside of a Sarai here. Wow. And you have to trek to this place, by the way. I mean, you, you really cannot take a car and all that. You have to walk a lot. This place is called Sanyasi Kupum. We heard that uh, there is a uh, uh, big uh, Nandi there. And people, you ask them, they, they won't know. So you have to, when you, when you give something small clue, you have to give them clues. Finally, when we ended there, and again, uh, I'm only this tall here, probably. And uh, it's, you can see how they must have uh, then taken it out to the uh, final destination and carved it. You can see the basic structure. So uh, you, you can see art in its rawest form, right? Uh, so this is like a fossil. So we have history like that. This one, um, um, I will come back to this picture later. Uh, a lot of you people would have gone to this place. It's, it's a place that a lot of you would have gone, but probably failed to notice. Uh, when I say free to notice, I'm going to um, draw your attention to a couple of things. How many of you have gone to the Kapalish River Kuwait? Lot of you, right? And when you enter, have you seen that something on the right and left? What? Inscriptions, what else? Kanapati. On the entrance gate. As soon as you enter. Gopra Pavanya, Gopra Munadi, eh? And you enter from the room there. So you part in the right hand side, there was another lady with a, a beautiful vine going around. All the way, and another lady at the other side. That's Ganga Yamuna. So it's Ganga Yamuna cleaning your 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 pavam, your padam, and all of that, and allowing you to go. In Kapali, you are going there are actually two of them. So you're going through two levels of Ganga Yamuna. Now these were built by the Vijayanagara guys, and they had reasons to do that. I mean, they just wanted this place to to be a sacred place and for you to enjoy the sanctity, they created all these uh, things. So next time you go, make sure you check out that. What do you think this is? Brahma. He's got three, right? One, two, three, and the fourth one's behind there. Of course, he had five. <coughs> the fifth one was plucked out. Uh, there's a big story to that. 
but right now you can see that this is Brahma. Look at that uh, serenity. Just think for a moment. This entire thing was just one, one stone, no form to it, and the artist is actually chipping away and bringing the sharpness to these features. And when you look at it, it actually uh, what they call the uh, Devi Gam, divinity. You actually can sense the divinity. I mean, look at the uh, the, the smile. It's, it's it's not a smirky smile. It's, it's a beautiful, pleasant smile. And look at the perfection. It's one, two, three, three blocks of uh, rock and they actually made sure that it blends in when they sit each other to the one on top of each other so which means the same artist when he created this he ensured that the blocks sit in the right place and sit in concert not a single hitch you can actually see that it's not a single hitch in any of these uh, statues that they created and um, um, this is in a place called Pulla uh, This temple, I, I can guarantee you, uh, I, I can personally find someone in America who would pay us about $17 million for this one, definitely, right? I mean, this is so pure, uh, that we are talking about the, uh, uh, maybe uh, this is uh, uh, the 10th century probably, 10th, 11th century, I mean, we are talking real old and uh, intact too. Now, I go to this temple, there is absolutely nobody there. I actually climb up on top of the temple to take more pictures and there is Rishabhataka. Rishabha, this is Rishabha and that is Shiva Rishabhataka. Now look at that beauty, look at the way the skin folds. It's almost like it's, it's uh, you, you can almost feel it, right? It, the way it, it folds and look at that tongue. This is actually 1300 years old, the tongue still survived through all this erosion. That tongue is still there. I mean, look, imagine the guy who must have uh, uh, sculpted this, he actually had a great understanding of the stone that uh, he ensured that this stays on. Of course, I don't know if he even thought that it's going to stay for 1300, 1400 years. All they knew was they were going to create this forever. And it's almost forever, 1300 years. Um, so, um, this one, again, I fell in love. Look at the way the, uh, the Rishabha stands, the, the, the way it curves. The way the, uh, the feet curves, uh, this is just immaculate. And this is all for you to just check it out. Now, this is what, uh, this is that Brahma that I showed you earlier. And that is Vishnu, you have the Chandi Chakra. And this, who do you think this is? Lingot Bhava. Exactly. Lingot Bhava, uh, very famous in Trivan Namalai, Andhadamdi. There is a mythology connected to this. We have someone here who is this? Vishnu the Pama Varada, right? Boar. He is going down. Why? The challenge was uh, how are we going to find the ends of Shiva? So Vishnu goes down and he is trying to dig in and he is unable to find the bottom. Meanwhile, what does Brahma do? He goes up in a swam, Annaparavai. He goes there and then he finds a flower that's falling down, Ketaki flower, falling down, he grabs hold of it, comes back and says, no, no, I've seen the uh, top of uh, Shiva, uh, I, got, I got the flower from Shiva's head. And actually it was falling down and because he lied, he was cursed that he'll never ever have a temple in his name. So you never see temple for Brahma at all. Right? You'll see a, a temple for Vishnu, you'll see a temple for uh, uh, Shiva, but not for uh, Brahma. So this is that mythology and in this temple we have both these guys on either side also. Again, immaculately preserved. And, I'm sorry? Pulla Mangai. Pulla Mangai. Pulla Mangai is the Tanjur Poravadi. So Kudu Kote, Tanjur, Alam, there are all different kinds of uh, uh, topographies and there are places to track. And I will come to why I make a presentation of these heritage uh, spots. So this is another uh, um, Lingot Bhavar. I mean, anywhere you go to a temple, you'll see Lingot Bhavar, you'll see Gosha Devangal, you'll see Vishnu and all that. Now, uh, when we were going to my Unari Bhavar, someone said there's an inscription, Pallava inscription, and we saw a board. It must look like Adhvay uh, 6th century in the mind, there English in the board. So we said, okay, let's go there. It's a place called Tondu. We went and asked people there, of course no one knew where it is. 
தென் ஒன் டே சேட் இல்லை எங்கள் அண்ணன் அண்ணனோட வயலில் எது ஒன்று இருக்குங்க வாங்க அப்படின்னு அங்கே போனால் இருக்கு தே திஸ் இஸ் அ இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் இட் இஸ் ஆல் த விதட் வே பட் ஹூ இஸ் தேட் விஷ்ணு வாட் சேஞ்ச் அபவுட் திஸ் விஷ்ணு எக்ஸாக்ட்லி ரைட் அவர் எந்த பக்கம் விவசாயம் செஞ்சுருக்காரு இடது பக்கம் பொதுவாக வந்து வலது பக்கம் தான் அவர் செஞ்சுருப்பார் சயனம் சயனமாக இருக்கிறது இந்த வலது பக்கத்தில் தான் சயனமாக இருப்பார் இங்கே இடது பக்கம் சயனமாக இருக்கார் ஃபார்ச்சுனேட்லி நோ ஒன் ஹட் டிஸ்கவர்ட் இட் டு மேக் அ டெம்பிள் அவுட் ஆஃப் இட் பட் ஹி இஸ் தேர் ஆன் இஸ் ஓன் நோ படி டு பாதிட் இட்ஸ் அப் டுவர்ஸ் டு கோ ஃபைண்ட் அவுட் ஐ கேன் ட்ரைக் தேர் அண்ட் தேட்ஸ் ஃபார் ஸ்கேல் தேட்ஸ் ஹவு பிகி எஸ் அண்ட் தட் தட்ஸ் மீ மை ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் இட்ஸ் 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 அண்டர் த ஏஎஸ்ஐ uh you where we see the board it, it means it's a uh, archaeological society of india but this is just a stone stone that they did they just went ahead and carved it i mean these are stone all over uh, india there are reportedly 38000 temples in south india any one of you give me five names of temples that you think are excellent i guarantee i've not been there another five of you give you five temples each i can guarantee none of you would have been to the other five there are so many of them right so um, we, we can do a lot more just going and uh, visiting these but um, i want to draw your attention to this one again um, narasimha narasimha who is this hiranyakashipu okay the mythology is uh, hiranyakashipu was the demon and uh, uh, vishnu had to come in the form of uh, narasimha to tear him apart of course Uh, he had a very the guy had a lot of boon that gave him complete immunity right no one can uh, beat him inside the house outside the house before uh, evening uh, after evening all kinds of stuff right and then uh, narsimha comes and look at the artist's uh, imagination this is narsimha he's got one hand holding this hand pulling him behind another hand pulling him behind this way and this hand is directed to snap him right there just imagine the force with which it has to come and break him right and he's got his leg in a lock so this guy cannot move at all he's in a pakka grip lock the legs are uh, locked over there the, this hand is locked another hand is locked there and this guy has got all of his hands free to just beat the hell out of him right just imagine the imagination it's a simple mythology but beautiful imagination right can, can you appreciate that now Now think about what uh, really I mean we, we really need to clap for those guys now this is in Kailasanath temple in Kanjipuram the same Hiranyakashipu look at the way this artist has depicted it he's got one hand here pulling him apart here he's got another hand putting his hair there and he's got his raised hand here he does not have a lot uh, leg but he's got him in a vice like grip so this guy cannot move at all and he has his hands around his shoulder under there go and he's going to hit him uh, you can go ahead and uh, take any of these mythological thing and no two statues will be the same they will be different they have the poetic license they, each of these artists had poetic license to what they wanted but they would stay true to the original uh, mythology and then that's how they preserved the uh, because if you make everything the same way i mean no no big deal right so um, Uh, we we saw this and then um, is it all about only god okay let me ask you this you you all seen inscriptions in temples right what percentage of those inscriptions are about religion 5 5 anybody someone said zero here <laughs> zero it's actually zero it's not about god at all you would not uh, uh, see someone uh, writing this is uh, from the kings that who who donated the land he would have given, given some land to say there should be a anaya valak nanda valak god is a term tamil andava nu solluvanga ama the whole andava than kadavul correct and kudayar ellam kudayavar kudayar lovely lovely so um so i'll cover it and inscription tower is also having noticed any fun elements in temples is something called shiva ganas right shiva ganas are uh, little monsters that are made out to look uh, uh, funny and look at this one there this is a sh- two shiva ganas they are actually uh, probably this is a lamb a goat 
This also might be another goat. They are actually having them butt heads. And this guy is actually crying. I mean, this guy is probably winning. He's winning and this guy is crying. And this guy has got his hands in a jeering thing. So if you look at the, the temple next time you go, look up. Don't just look down. Anytime you go to a temple, look up all the time. You will see these kind of shirodanas and they will have beautiful, lovely stories to show you. Simple stories. I've seen one shirodana poking the eye of another guy. I've seen another shirodana poking the nose of another guy. Uh, I mean, it's, it's fun stuff. Uh, and then we, we, we've actually caught each other uh, standing in there and laughing. I mean, it's, it's a cartoon, live cartoon. The Dilbert and all that kind of cartoon. You see very political statements also made there of the times. So you, if you can try and decipher what it is, um, it is left to your poetic independence at that time. And um, we also have to walk long distance. I guarantee that much. When you are uh, hunting for temples, uh, I've been doing that almost for the past uh, year or so. And uh, we pick up a Saturday or Sunday and then just go. And uh, we make it at the day trip from Chennai. My goal is anyone should be able to wake up on a morning on Sunday 10 a.m. Say I can get ready by 12 <laughs> and I have to come back by 6 p.m. for the movie. So six hours, where can I go and come back? I guarantee you, I will give you a hundred such addresses that can go to within six hours and come back. Yeah. And there are places like this, beautiful little villages. And um, this one village is uh, close to Gangi Kunda uh, We had heard that uh, uh, Rajendra Chora's uh, army had gone up north, conquered and brought back some uh, beautiful uh, statues of Kali's. So we did not know where it was. Someone said, Amga, Edor, it's like that. So we had to walk along this. I mean, you had to park the car somewhere. The cars cannot go there here. You walk and walk and walk, not knowing whether you're going to be safe or actually safe. It, it's not a problem, big thing at all. I mean, these are villages that, that are very friendly. So you walk along and then we came across this little temple where they had uh, imprisoned five, one, two, three, four, five, five guards there. But fortunately for us, it was not locked. We could open it, we could remove all these clothes, we found a, a, a tap uh, close by, we found, we borrowed a kodam, a plastic kodam from uh, the village, and we took the water, we went and gave Abhishekam to all of these guys there. Look at that, this is from Kalinga. When Rajendra Chola's uh, army went to Kalinga and captured uh, and, uh, and won over them, they brought back these statues, beautiful statues. So this is not South Indian, but it's North Indian uh, and you can see the difference too. But look at the beauty. Again, you're talking about uh, um, 1100 years, 1100 year old uh, statues there for you to just touch and feel. I mean, you can go touch them. This car, you can you can you can wash her completely. You can put kumkum on. You can you can do puja. No one there to stop you, and it does not matter who you are. You just go and do it. And uh, uh, and then we've had fun just going and taking care of these uh, uh, statues. And the more of you go, the better. And then the villagers are very very helpful. They they are very inviting. They say come on over, do something, and then they they even offer you some uh, more and all that. Um, so, um, during one of our travels, we went to a place called Takkolam. Anyone heard of Takkolam? Takkolam. Punni in Chelman, Padichamra. War. Right? It was a very uh, big battle there. And uh, so we went to see the battleground, huge battleground. Uh, but there was one uh, temple there, Jalanadeswara Jala temple. And uh, of course, you always see uh, Dakshinamurti, uh, one of the gods, Gosha gods. Dakshinamurti, um, Shivan. Brahma, Vishnu, and a lot of times you'll see someone like this. Who's this? Durga. Not Dwara Balakar. Dwara Balakar can be standing in that stand, right? But this is Durga. This is a very beautiful Durga, and you have to see it in person to, to appreciate the beauty, but look at what's happening here. Who's this? Mahishashwaran, right? So, she has just vanquished Mahishashwaran and he's there, the head is there. She's standing on, this is her uh, left leg, this is her right leg that is turned around and she's standing in a very stylish, tribanka they call it. This is three axes and look at her arm, abaya. 
right? She's, she's actually saying, you're safe, my son. My daughter, my son, my, my people, you're safe from, from all of these uh, demons. I have actually vanished him, and then here I am. So, actually this, this reminded me yesterday, particularly when we were talking about the International Women's Day. I mean, you see, women power right there. Pure woman power. And she's there. I'm there. Guys, don't worry. And I guarantee you, you guys go there, now that you listen to me, you go stand in front of her, you'll exactly, you'll actually say, let me just stand here. You feel so safe. You don't have to be a, 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 a religious person, a spiritual person. You can just stand there. The, the magnificence of this entire uh, sculpting will overpower you. And, and people say there's vibrations and all that. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't get those vibrations. Maybe I, I'm very... Uh, vibrations don't death. Uh, I don't know. But, uh, but I have been overawed by the sheer beauty of what we see there. Um, how many of you have gone to Tanji Perikoe? Everyone, a lot of us have gone, right? Um, <coughs> you, you see that big uh, temple, but what is Isana Mule? Anyone know what is Isana Mule is? Vastu. Vastu. According to Vastu, that is what Agni, right? So actually, the main entrance where you are another pony, to the left of it, there is a kitchen. You might actually, you will actually miss, miss the kitchen. It's a kitchen inside uh, the village of Gould. And then you go in and no one will stop you, by the way. And there's active, there will be people there cooking and all that, no one will stop you. You can go there and there you will see Agni. This is Mr. Agni sitting there. And then he's actually tall. If I stood, I'm probably only that tall. Right? And he's so huge, uh, you can see that he's being broken down. Uh, but Agni is there and uh, he's in active worship too. Active worship, uh, right in the end of Samayal And uh, these are the things that we should not miss. We just go there, we look at the big temple. If we start talking about the big temple and something <coughs> from, we can talk for the next uh, five hours. And you guys will give me more information after that too. Uh, but this one is uh, uh, an example of what you should not miss when you are going to these big temples. Nam Parambarethi Tattpodhi Nilai, state of our heritage. Um, how many of you actually uh, uh, rue the fact that our heritage is not necessarily the best kept right now? Everyone, right? Everyone feels that. In fact, today um, uh, when he talked about uh, the transition, one of the ways we can transition back to that original path is to take it easy. And the way to take it easy is I mean, we, a lot of us have gone away from TV now. We've gone away from TV or, or we are on WhatsApp, we are on Facebook, we just substituted it, right? So we, it's not like we would stop going for movies. We're going for movies, but not that, so many. We watch TV, but... Now, add Google Maps to that also. Add Google Maps, and I will give you the uh, uh, locations of all of these places, and you can actually go there and, and, and take it easy. Take a whole day off. Uh, you probably just take a bike ride from here to uh, Kanjiburam, uh, 6 hours, 8 hours. The best time to leave from Chennai is at 5 a.m. in the morning. You will be uh, wherever you want to go with by 7.38. You will be able to see God in, in all His glory. And uh, visit two more temples by uh, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And then come home. Right? So, this one, this is where we see our heritage right now. This one, um, probably again, 6th, 7th century uh, brick. And it's standing there. Mind you, people have tried to pull out these bricks. And uh, it's not coming down. It's still solid. And if you go inside and look up, this is what you see. You can see it's beautifully uh, designed, architected, uh, to hold uh, all of these uh, um, chengal intact. And this is how uh, um, the Tanji Periya coil also would look like if you were able to go inside and see. Up, oh, it's hollow, and this is the hollow thing. Uh, I would, I wish that we could go and start to restore this. Again, restoration is not much other than building a probably a wall around this place, and we are actually talking to the villagers there so that they will allow us to do this. And I'm hoping that uh, more of you guys will join us. The um, moment I talked about Pullamangai, the Brahma. This is where the guy is. He says, actually on the other side, but look at all these uh, growth. Uh, they've actually tried to do something maybe about five, seven, eight years ago, but uh, these growth have come. 
and all it needs is just to be pulled out and that's we are good at that right uh, you see i mean in the middle of nowhere we saw this nandi absolutely middle of nowhere there's no temple anywhere it's just right there i'm sure some guy who wants to take this uh, overseas can still sell it for a good price because it's probably i don't know maybe uh, 9th 10th centuries it's a chola architecture um this one is uh, there is three four of his uh, descendants stayed these guys built their homes uh, using uh, brick uh, we found uh, um, uh, nails pottery and a lot of uh, historically relevant stuff you can actually go check it out yourself no one's going to stop you you can go check it out just don't take uh, the nails and the uh, pottery from there just leave them there hopefully the archaeological survey of india will pick it up and they'll archive it now um, this is uh, probably uh, a lot of people might have heard of this but remember there was one temple that um, was in the way of a highway and there was an uproar by a lot of us right this is that place we stopped the highway from cutting across this temple and uh, we are going to restore this this is probably another restoration okay so what is heritage what is heritage i've shown you a whole bunch now give me what is heritage i'm sorry anything ancient right anything else anything about 100 years anything about 100 years absolutely absolutely thank you uh, that's what they say in america right anything over 80 years it's a historic site uh, here 100 years in fact uh, the last um, probably about 80 to 90 temples that i be i have not visited any temple younger than 900 years and 80 temples have gone there and there are about 480 temples under asi and the tamil nadu asi um and you can go for the rest of the year and still not see the entire list right so why is it important i would say it's important for what uh, the previous speaker was talking about it's important to maintain a heritage <coughs> bring ourselves to a slow you, this way we are not going to spend too many resources we're just going to take a bike or a car go there have fun with your friends and actually reclaim those uh, sites from those uh, those uh, liquor drinking card playing gang right it's yours you have to retain them and um, so it should be a, a preserve and how can you contribute any idea i told you go visit anything else you can do can create awareness you can create awareness cities can do that right yes. and the cities have done something until now devanur actually we've done a lot we've done um, what is this Kanjiburam. Kanjiburam, but what's the name of the place? Ayyengarapuram. Remember yesterday, uh, Arun was talking about preserving our lakes. I mean, we are in sync with what yesterday's speaker said. Arun, he wants to preserve the lake. And what did uh, uh, Mangalam? Today she was talking about uh, um, collecting the prasadam, right from the uh, from the uh, temples. So you can see yesterday's uh, Arun, yesterday's. Um, um someone else was talking about plastics and today's mangalam we all are on sync with what we need to do to save our heritage and this was a beautiful place uh, ayengar kulam a number of our uh, employees uh, is masu is masu here okay in a tea plantation the boy there okay kanalai he took uh, again he took the lead on this one we um, we dug the place out we uh, planted lot of trees and uh, the last time i went there probably about two months ago i think most of them survived at least about uh, 90% of them survived it's a little bit that we can go and replant again but this is a beautiful thing that we're going to do we are doing already and you can see again i'm sorry i'm going to point out all these ladies there right i mean it's not just a man's job we are not the differentiating between a gender a male or a female and you can see a good uh, good uh, mix of people here so you can actually motivate anybody whether they are young or old to take them to these kind of places do some plantation and preserve it and another place was devanu right so look at the ruins it was in utter ruins again we did not have bulldozers we did not have major uh, uh, machinery we just went ahead and used our hands and this is how i mean all of these are bookishes all these are treasures they pull this out and um, again uh, this is near uh, jinji um 
heart sunk. We did this over, over three or four months, right? How many of you were there with the uh, Devanood uh, project? Two. Give them a big hand, guys, please. These guys did a tremendous job. And in fact, they even <laughs> discovered uh, untold wealth. Right? I mean, just imagine, these are bronzes. Each uh, worth crores of rupees. If we had not discovered them, someone might have discovered them and taken them out. Australia, New Zealand, Europe, wherever, we would never have seen them at all into a private collector's uh, collection. Here we have them all, safe and sound, um, and they are being uh, uh, propitiated. So, a big round of applause for this entire thing. <laughs> so, while we are going to Palani Hills, uh, does anyone recognize Palani Hills here? Peter? That's Palani. That's your MX6, I think. PX2. Two? Okay. PX, sorry. PX2. Right? And then a beautiful place. What about this one? Nartha. Nartha Malay. Who said that? Oh, very good. Shiva. That's Nartha Malay. Again, another place to trek to. At the top of the hill, you have a hill. In fact, a lot of stones was uh, potentially taken from here to build a, a big temple also. And uh, I play a little game. Um, my name is Manik, right? Now, Manik, does it sound like a South Indian name? Manik Basha. Manik Basha, okay. <laughs> Manik Arai. My name is Manik Arai. When I went to the US, they couldn't spell the, pronounce the entire name, so they shortened it to Manik and it stuck. So I said, okay, uh, I'm going to do some fun thing over here. And then I started going to the inscriptions that were there in temples, and of course I found my name there. I found my name here in Panjo. Panjai Periya Koi, Punnadi or 55 meter length of a wall, and there's a whole bunch of names, and my name was there. How was it there? Kariya Mani Right? I can guarantee you, you go through the inscription, you will find your name in some form or the other. Say Kariya Mani Kam, and that is Ma, Ni, Ik, this, they don't put the dot there. So you can read, and it's not too tough. You can learn to read. This is a, a 10th century uh, Tamil. Yeah, you all just read it, right? Can you all read it? Yes. yes. Right? So, not too difficult. I mean, you have to go through a little bit of a coaching, but you can go from 18th, 16th, 14th, 10th century, and I can guarantee you, JB, one not a very good So, um, in the end, our society will be defined not only by what we create, but what we refuse to destroy. Thank you so much. Any questions? I'm going to be here for a few more minutes. But I'm going to be here for the rest of the evening, so you can always ask me. Any what, questions? What, what is the answer I need to do actually to make it? Uh, not much. I mean, they, they have a certain budget. That's all they can do. We, I'm not going to go back uh, at them. They're doing their best. I guarantee you. You, you go meet some of the officials here. They, they are very much into it. They, they would love to give you as much information. Uh, I cannot blame them at all. It's just that we don't have, we have too much history. Let's so put it up. How can we as a group maybe? Uh, visit them. Please, visit them. Um, I'm willing to come up, I'm actually coming up with a book, uh, four of us, um, Sasi Dharan, uh, Ramesh, Akhila and I, we are coming up with a book where we are uh, going to list out the 100 day trips from Chennai. So you should be able to pull up my book, uh, pull up a, a leaf from there and say, okay, where can I go today? <coughs> and if you do 100 weekends, you've covered about four or five years there. You just visit. And then anytime you see something Asian, just come. Nothing wrong. You might not understand it. it. I had not understood anything at all. I was motivated by someone who gave a speech like this three years ago. And uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about um, people like constructing this event? What do you think about the people who are plastering these ancient temples with tiles and uh, the other cement and actually hiding the inscriptions behind it? I'm so sorry, but I. I, I we are all livid about it, but we cannot do anything about it. Some politician wants to put his name 
and he goes ahead and uh, takes Raja Raja Chodan's name off and puts his name so the cheap uh, uh, 500 rupee tie, right? Uh, sad, but then again, I think uh, the only way we can preserve them is to go visit. Yes. Is there any alternative way? Bringing the ASI so that I think they can stop. ASI don't have enough budget, and they're doing the best they can. No, at least they have to stop 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 the people. Yeah, what they do is, for example, they have 400 sites that they're taking care of in Tamil Nadu. And every one of them, and literally, basically, not only did they understand the significance of those places, say like Uttara Meru or Kanjiburam, uh, those temples, and then they would have gone ahead and spent enough time and money to ensure that it's really taken care of. So if you find someone, some temple that <coughs> can, uh, you can have an attention to that uh, from ASI, we can go there and ask them. We can tell them to take care of it. Yes, sir. Uh, what is like a Pallava or Chola uh, kings, something he used? One of my friend has it. Does, does he own it or uh, we should return it to the government? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it just... It belongs to the... Uh, it belongs to the people of India. Uh, but unfortunately... Unfortunately... Um, ASI or any of the, the organization don't have the wherewithal to say this. So, in fact, I have a friend here in the city. Um, you go into his house, it looks like a, a complete museum. He's got miniatures, he's got uh, first century BC statues. But what he's done is he's gone ahead and when he collected through from his school days, he went and registered with the Archaeological Survey of India and said, This is a statue that I have in my home. And so it's registered, so which means he has a uh, duty to save it up as best as he can. He cannot sell it. So once you register, it's there. So if your friend has that, he can go register with the Archaeological Survey of India so that people know it's there. I'm sorry, I think I took a little bit more time than I wanted to, but uh, I hope it was uh, fun for you guys to listen to as much fun I had going to all these places. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mani. I'm sure all of us had great fun with you, your presentation. And uh, um, I request Sandhya Rajaraman to present uh, Momento and Kungai Sapling to Mani. <laughs>